that massive rides like this are just something I need. I want to do massive crossings like this all over the world. When we got home, Nicole and I pulled out our globe and just spent hours, you know, what are the places geographically that this makes sense? And then race season starts. And those dreams of adventure get put on hold for months. Until the chaos of travel, races, media events, and the seemingly endless tick of that clock finally stops. And then there's time to start dreaming and planning again. And that led me to Australia's least populated state, an island at the edge of the world, Tasmania. Initially, my plan was to ride the Tasmania Trail a famous 290 mile north to south route. Over the course of studying these weird Strava segments that have like seven people on them, I found Emma's name, reached out to her, because I noticed that she just had ridden all over the island. And then I stumbled across one of her rides where she'd actually done a coast to coast in a single push. I figured she'd be a good person to talk to to get input in regards to a route. One of the main objectives for me with doing rides like this is to like let go of the super type A racer that I have yeah. to be all year. And so for the first phase of planning this, I was still really hung up on like, it'd be really cool to be 24 hours. Yeah. And then I was like, why do I even care? Like that's super not the point. Yeah. Um, is there anything other than just, you know, common mosquitoes that are dicey? You know, we've got plenty of snakes and you'll probably see them, but... Will I? Yeah. Some tiger snakes. Yeah. Well, you do. I mean, you get snakes at home, don't you? Yeah, but not the fourth most venomous snake in the world. Well, I have a couple um, route questions that are pretty minor at this point because I feel like I've obsessed about as much as I can. And I still will want to do this ride really fast and hard just because I love to ride that way. But I think it's been really healthy to let go of putting like a time metric. The whole time I've been telling myself that these things are about putting racing aside and experiencing a place and the bike in a different way. She ended up guiding me towards building a much wilder, longer, and more adventurous route for a coast to coast crossing. Together we just made a massive route that abandons the FKT aspect of a crossing in favor of more of a best of, starting with traversing the Tarkine Rainforest and finishing with 50 miles of the most famous single track in Australia. The biggest takeaway is that she loves to understate things. I'm taking everything she said and adding like a 25% gnarliness expectation based on what I've seen so far. Some of Tazzy's finest. There's a um a good rivalry between the north of Tasmania and the south of Tasmania, and that is the those red, those strawberry kisses we call them, or ruby tubes. They are a staple of the north. Or if they don't like it down here, they drink this terrible blue stuff. It's no good. So yeah, if we're in. We're deep behind enemy lines with that box. How you going, Skippy? What's up? Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm doing it so crooked. Does it matter, Hello. What's going on? How's it going? Good. 
How nice was to see you. You too, guys. How was the drive? Oh, oh. <laughs> road, road works. Did, um, did Emma hit, word you up? She's a classic bike packer. Just, yeah. Nothing is hard to her. Yep. <laughs> she basically told me this route's easy. Which I call bullshit on. Worst case, I think it'll take me nine hours to get to Waratah, 18 hours to get to Deloraine, 30 hours to get to Derby. And those are the three places I could refuel. So it's kind of tricky in terms of, like I'm for sure gonna have refuel points, but how much do I want to rely on them? Iceland, I was like, it was definitely an adventure and it was a really cool thing to see, but it was for sure pretty athletically driven still and performance driven. This is way more a survival mission. Like there's just so much out there that could go wrong. So much out there that could go wrong. Thank you, sir. I suppose I should start my nav. Courses. How big a course should we do today? I cast my pebble onto the shore of eternity to be washed by the ocean of time. It has shape, form, and substance. It is me. One day I will be no more, but my pebble will remain here on the shore of eternity mute witness for the eons that today I came and stood at the edge of the world. the more I realize what a narrow experience that is. Like it's so confining to just have your entire bike experience. So dependent on time all the time. And that's what racing is. All your workouts are based on time. The results sheet is based on time. All of the obligations you have outside in a given race weekend are based on time. Minds that are kind of at war, like the one that's been a racer for so long and the one that wants to experience the world. And one of the main reasons that Tasmania was on my list of places I wanted to do something like this is because I've been to Australia and I didn't get to see it at all. Flew in, I think I was here like five days, had a super shitty race, was really depressed about the way I raced and I flew home. Like I didn't have the faintest idea what Australia was about. I was feeling pretty high and mighty for the start because everyone, including myself, was adamant that this route could not be done in a day or less. I pretty intentionally was trying to let go of that dumb, arbitrary delineation time-wise. But I was sitting on 15 and a half mile an hour average before dropping into the Waratah snake pit. And I was like, 14.9 average is a 24 hour crossing. And I was like, what if I just blew everyone's minds, including mine into this in a day? 90 something miles, 95? Let's see, 98, 98 and a half miles, six hours and 50 minutes. Yeah, I just gotta get through the snake pit, the Waratah snake pit. Um, and right up here is where I saw the big tiger snake a couple of days ago, so I'm definitely a little on edge. What the fuck? That's dude. why I took my glasses off. Oh my god. <laughs> what was that? They're the same color as the ground. Oh my god. That puppy god. weighs at least four feet. Fuck! Yeah. Okay. Ah! <laughs> First proper hike a bike 
of the ride. May not look steep, but it is. We have kind of like a grindy, steady 600 foot climb now on this backcountry track. And then we'll hop out on the road and get to Waratah at mile 105, which is my first resupply opportunity. Which is good, because I just ran out of water. We're doing it, having fun. Something salty would be clutch. So if the Delarine grocery store closes at 10 typically, might they close at eight-ish or something, you think? I very well want. So I normally shut at six, seven o'clock, so. I should maybe get more food. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thank you, thanks again. One thing that I appreciate about this one as opposed to Iceland, for example, is Iceland was incredibly accessible by vehicle almost the whole time. So there was a vehicle within sight, probably half the ride. That was very different with this one. I spent the majority alone, and I mean, there were three, four, or five hour periods where I didn't see anyone at all. What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Bro. They're so docile. He's so cool. He's been wow. hanging out with us for a while. What a legend. All right, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I don't know if this store is open until 10, but it's going to be close. Yeah. See you, buddy. There's still some like tradition in terms of this self-reliance. And so even though I really enjoyed being able to share the experience like in the moment with all of y'all, there's a certain separation that I still like to maintain to kind of pay a little bit of tribute to that tradition. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that seeing you guys didn't like lift my spirits at times. Like absolutely it did and absolutely it changes the experience. But if I'd actually come into physical contact with Nicole and given her a big hug, to me that would have crossed a line from the experience that I was looking for. A hug is what you do when you've finished a long journey, you know? So I guess that's why I wanted to save it. All right, see you guys, hang in there. Not too much longer. Like if you guys had seen that I was completely like on my deathbed from a calorie standpoint or like I'd been out of water for four hours, I still wouldn't have accepted help from you guys from a food or water standpoint just because of that self-reliance tradition. And it feels so much better to know that you got yourself from coast to coast completely of your own self-reliance. If he makes it in time, he'll be really excited and feel like he like got one of his goals. And I think he's not really talking about it, but I really think that he wants to finish uh, this effort in under 24 hours, so. Last time I checked, he was less than 10 miles out. Oh, come on, Peso. <laughs> if, they, if, if they're close a couple minutes early, he is gonna be like, whether or not he says that <laughs> he's trying to let go of the racer boy, he he's trying to go as fast as he can. Hello. That was an adventure. Oh. Am I allowed to still buy stuff? Yeah. Okay. That was by far the hardest part so far. That was absurd. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Pretty tired, but very uh, glad that y'all decided to stay open. <laughs> oh, this is overwhelming. I don't even know where to start. I was definitely pushing the pace pretty hard because I wanted to make this store. But now that that's done, I feel like, I mean, I'm not going to shut it down, but I'm going to try to back off a little bit on the climbs and just <clears throat> enjoy the ride. It's so unusual to not be like chasing a record or 
I, I, I don't know why I've never been able to be this way, but I'm pretty emotionally detached from how long it takes me, which is a fun place to be. Oh, I've been dreaming about this. <sighs> like in most scenarios, I wouldn't be caught dead just sitting here for 20 minutes. This is so nice. As an athlete, there's a big like ego streak that I know I have that I think probably most athletes have. Maybe it's even something you have to have, I don't know. But not exceeding someone's expectations drives me crazy. I, I, I never really fell apart, but the route just got, it just like got exponentially more difficult the closer I got to the ocean. And I was just like, son of a bitch, I'm not gonna break 30 hours. Yeah, but I took forever at the Deloraine store. It's like, yeah, well, you kinda had to. You were off your rocker mentally and needed a break. <laughs> you could not get a rhythm, no matter what. There was no rhythm to be had. Even on the smooth, straight road bits, like, I was scared to get in the aero bars at night because I don't have brake levers on my aero bars. And there's just wombats and wallabies, just like, pinging back and forth across the road just constantly and it's like it was insane <laughs> dawn made it made it to tuesday morning now just to finish off these last oh 80 miles 70 miles and 7,000 feet of climbing the hardest part of the route is the last climb, of course. These big personal challenge rides, these crossings are almost an opportunity for self-awareness that I don't get anywhere else. And that's why I think, like for now, I'm getting away from the FKT thing, the whole fastest known time thing, the pressure of time on a bike in general, because my racing career is that. I hope people come here and do this ride or others. Um, dream something up in their own backyard, whatever it is. I just would much rather share these experiences and share cycling. Even though I'm incredibly exhausted, the last, almost all of the last 50 miles of my route being single track is an incredible reward. I will have other solo endeavors at some point that aren't documented. 98% of my training rides are solo endeavors, lonely endeavors. But I wanted to share Tasmania with the world. It's just as simple as that. I have a list of places geographically that I'm interested in. But I'd like more time. I'd like more time, and that, that's almost counterintuitive, but I'd like more time outside of the ride itself. Oh, that ocean smells amazing. I mean, these are just like life highlights. And it's, it, I don't know that it's often the case that like you, you have a life highlight and you know in the moment, you're like, that's one, that's a life highlight. through a phase a few hours ago where I cried like seven times in a good way and now I'm just emotionless for some reason I can't feel anything oh that's okay Nico oh my sweet Nico I'm so sorry oh.
You need. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Nick. I knew it would feel so much better to have that hug be on the beach here at the finish. A lot of times it takes a few years to look back on it, but I don't know, it just feels like such a treat to just have the privilege to like line something up and be like, yeah, let's, uh, let's plan a life highlight mission. And then you just go execute. You're like, yep, that was it. That was definitely a life highlight and I got to share it with awesome people. What's the next one? <laughs>